creations. If you're new to my channel and you're stopping by for the first time, thank you for stopping by. Welcome to my channel. Stick around a while by clicking that red button for more crafting on a budget, more everything on a budget videos to come. And if you click it again when the bell appears, YouTube should notify you every time I'm uploading a new video, depending on the option that you choose in the drop down menu of the bell. If you're interested in following me on social media, you can find those links in the description box below. What have I got going on for you for today? Today I'm bringing to you another really cool paper crafting DIY. I have an overabundance of scrapbooking paper. I love to craft with paper. I think it's one of my favorite pastimes when I'm watching a movie on a Saturday or a Sunday. It kind of just helps pass the day along. And there are some really great things that can be created with using paper. And since a lot of people right now may be out of a job, may be laid off, may not be working because their business is closed down and they're at home. You know, this is gonna be over in a few months and even then we're all gonna have a lot of catch up to do and then the holidays are gonna be coming. And so I thought that I could bring you some really cool paper crafting DIYs that would make for great gifts using scrapbooking paper. These are budget friendly DIYs that make for amazing gifts to give. I think this next holiday season is probably gonna be a quieter one due to finances. And so I think that it's awesome to be able to just hand make, hand create a gift if you're somebody who just wants to give something to somebody to show them how how much you care or just that you're thinking of them and so today's DIY is amazing it is so budget friendly you are gonna love this it is easy to do you know what I can't wait till the end of the video I'm just gonna show you what it is now today we're gonna be making this tea bag holder my word these are so stinking cute this is great because when you open it up you've got pouches that hold individual tea bags in them that very easily come out. Now you can make one of these tea bag holders and put all of the same tea in it, or you can go to Dollar Tree and you can buy some of Dollar Tree's amazing teas. You know what, actually I have them, let me go get it. Okay, so here they are. These are the teas that I bought from the Dollar Tree, I wanna say five or six weeks ago before all of this stuff broke out because I am such a hot tea drinker during the day, and so, I picked out the flavors that I like a lot. They've got other flavors, but I really like the peppermint, the apple cranberry, I drank this one a lot, the vanilla chai, and the chamomile. There's 20 tea bags in each box, which is amazing. So you could very easily make one of these tea bag holders and just put four pouches in it if you want. I did five and six pouches and I put a different tea bag in each pouch. And so this is another one that I made. And again, I used the stickers in embellishments that I had on hand. I didn't go out and buy anything. Let me quit my gabbing. Let's get to it and let me show you just how simple, easy, and fun these are to make these tea bag holders. I love this. Before I get started today, I wanna to show you just how stinking cute these are. These are amazing. So if you have any kind of paper crafting supplies, this would be perfect, like I said, for Mother's Day. It's inexpensive, it's handmade, and it's an amazing gift to give. You go ahead and open this up and you've got these adorable envelopes here that have a tea bag in them. I was having fun. I've made several of these. I think I'm gonna gift them to my neighbors. And they're just really cute and you can really just get creative with the paper that you use and make it fun. It doesn't have to be anything fancy. Dollar Tree does have construction paper. They do have some scrapbooking paper as well. And so maybe if you're there picking up some food items, you can just make a quick turn over to the crafting aisle and pick up some paper. The paper pack that I'm using today is this Meant to Be by Craft Smart. There's 24 different designs in it and 48 sheets. This is a heavier duty cardstock, and I just love all of the prints and patterns that are in this stack. You can get these for about four to six dollars at Michael's depending on the sale. And I do know that Michael's is doing curbside pick up and so you can order some stuff online, you can pull up, you text or call a number and tell them that you're there. You pop your trunk and they put the stuff in the trunk if 
you are really getting bored at home, you can go out and you can get stuff like that to keep yourself occupied. I've got a ton of these, so it's not something that I've had to do, but I have seen on the news that that's what Michael's and Joann's is doing, and I think it's really great because I really feel like crafting is therapeutic. And if you're left with nothing to do because you weren't prepared for this stay at home order to go into play, it, it can be very isolating and, you know, staying at home for weeks in with nothing to do just isn't healthy. And so I do believe that it is essential to go out and get things to keep your mind going, to keep your hands going, to keep you occupied. And I believe that you can do it by being safe, by ordering stuff online and doing the curbside pickup and having it put in your trunk so there's no contact. For the envelopes, I'm gonna be using two different prints because I thought it would be fun just to kinda switch up the pattern and kinda do gingham flower, gingham flower, gingham. The measurements for these envelopes are going to be seven and a half inches long by three and a half inches wide. And again, you're gonna need five pieces at that measurement. This is a new scoring board that I just picked up off of Amazon by We Are Memory Keepers. And what's great about this, I had to have it, even though I have a scoring board and a cutter, is that this is a scoring board and cutter all in one. And I just looked again today. I have shown this in the past in some of my other videos, but it is going for about $20 right now on Amazon, which I think is a great buy for a two in one. And so I'll insert a picture here. You can see that I just screenshotted this. The delivery date is May 4th. So this is a newer price. This price on this website seems to fluctuate a dollar or two um, from day to day. And so you may end up paying $22 or you may even end up paying less than 20. You just, it, it kind of fluctuates, but it doesn't go much more than the $20 that I'm showing here. So taking our seven and a half by three and a half inch pieces, we're going to score this at two and a half. and five and three quarters. The only difference with this scoring board versus the other one, and it does take a bit of getting used to, is you're working from right to left instead of left to right. The numbers are on the right side, but that's because of the cutter, so it has to be that way. We're gonna take, flip it over, and we're gonna fold in our scoring lines. And so this is gonna be the envelope, and this is the top flap. Now, if you want to round your corners, you can. If you don't have a corner rounder, don't worry about it. Because I have one, I am going to use it. This is one by We Are Memory Keepers that I believe I got at Joann's. And there we go. Just round off those corners. We're gonna go ahead and open up our envelope flaps. And on this bottom flap here, we're gonna go ahead and run some adhesive. If you wanna use a Lean's Tacky Glue, you can do that or you can use some of Dollar Tree's double-sided adhesive roll as well. With this, you just have to peel off the paper once you apply it to the surface. Since I've got my ATG gun out, I'm gonna use my ATG gun. There's a link to this ATG gun in uh, my Amazon store link down below in the description box if you're interested in it as well. There we go. We have just made five tea bag envelopes. How easy is that? Super easy, nothing fancy needed for this. Now to close these, some yellow buttons that I had in my stash already. When placing these buttons, you wanna put them in a way that when you place your flap down, you can take your flap in and out of the button and the button is what's going to hold it close. So you're not gonna wanna place hot glue in the center of your button, but rather on the bottom part of your button and you're gonna wanna place it with this flap down. 
And so we're gonna go ahead and put just a bit of hot glue here on the bottom edge of the button. I'm gonna close my flap. I'm gonna place my button down just like so. And that way it's holding my envelope closed, but I can still go ahead and open and close my envelope. For the holder or the cover, I guess, of the envelopes, I'm using a solid piece of cardstock that coordinates with my patterned paper from my paper stack. And this is gonna measure out at 11 long by three and three quarters wide. Now, if you wanna use a patterned piece, you totally can. I just kinda like to use a solid piece of cardstock and use my scraps that I have left over from the envelopes to decorate it. And so, like I said, this is 11 by three and three quarters. You're gonna score this at three and a half, four and three quarters, eight and one fourth, or a quarter, eight and a quarter, and nine and a half. I'm gonna fold in all my scoring lines. There we go. And so you can see here that we've got a holder with a flap here. The shorter side is the flap. So I'm gonna go ahead and again with my corner rounder, round in those corners. I'm gonna take some of my scraps that I had left over and I'm gonna cut a piece that measures out at one and a quarter wide by three and a quarter long. And on one end, if you rounded your corners, you're gonna round two of the corners, only two. Flip it over, place some adhesive, whether it's Aileen's or your double-sided tape. And this is going to go on the small flap here. See how that just dresses it up? And so again, that's the top part, the top flap. So on this bottom flap here, I cut another piece that is three and a quarter long by two inches wide. And I'm gonna flip that over, hit it with a bit of tape here. And this piece is gonna go on the lower half. And I didn't do it the full length because when this flips over, it closes it up. So there's no need to waste that paper. If you wanna do it, you can. I just didn't see the need. And so while this is still flat, we're gonna go ahead and close up the envelope. And taking another button, we're gonna place just a bit of glue there at the bottom place that just like so. For this top part here, I did cut another piece of scrapbooking paper that measures out at one by three and a quarter. And that is going to go just right on the top there. Almost forgot that piece. That's better. So that way when we close it up, we've got the decorative top and the front. Now, how are we going to put these envelopes in this so it can stand super easy? For the holder of the tea bag envelopes, you're gonna need a piece of scrapbooking paper, whether it's pattern or solid. I'm going with solid since my holder is solid and I don't wanna draw any attention to this. And this piece measures out at four inches by three inches. And this piece, we are going to score it several times. We're going to score it at a half inch, then again at one inch, 
one and a half inches, two inches, so it's every half inch right now, two and a half inches, three, and lastly at three and a half inches. So it was a half inch, one inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half. So you should be left with several scoring lines that are a half an inch apart. So with this piece, you can see I've already folded it, but I didn't get it on camera. You're gonna start off holding it just like so. You're gonna fold this first piece down, then you're gonna fold it back towards you. Then you're going to leave a half inch gap here and you're going to just go to the next one and fold it up as well because you want your pieces to look like this. So there's a piece standing but you've got this gap here in between. And so to do that you're going to, you want it to kind of look like this if you see what I'm talking about. So by scoring it the way we did, we take these pieces and kind of pinch them together. And there you've got the insert that we're gonna attach our envelopes to. It really isn't that confusing. Once you've got it folded, you're gonna go ahead and flip it over and you're gonna see that you have these two flat parts here. No adhesive should be put on those. So we're gonna take our adhesive we're gonna place it on the first one and go ahead and fold it. And so now you've got that first one folded, you've got this flat area. So in the middle area here, next to the flat area, you're gonna put more adhesive and you're gonna attach it like so. So now you've got this. Then in this last flap here, we're gonna add more adhesive. And I know it seems complicated, but just follow along with me and you'll get it pretty easily. And there we go. We have just made a piece that should look like this. On this bottom edge, there's two pieces here. You're gonna add some adhesive to that. And you can do that just by laying it flat adding either your glue or your tape. And this piece is going to go, you've got your envelope here. This is the top flap. You're gonna open that up. You're gonna open this up. And then you've got this piece here. This is gonna go right in there and it'll fit perfectly. So you just wanna kinda center it. And look there. That's what you should be left with. And so I'm gonna place just a bit of adhesive on the back of my envelope here. And then I'm just gonna stick it just like so. And so now we have placed our envelope. Isn't that cool? And so I'm gonna Place my adhesive. Now when you're placing your envelopes, the adhesive always goes on the bottom of the back, not the front. And there you go, would you look at that? We've got all of the envelopes placed. For this set, I'm gonna go with the mint because it the paper stack name is meant to be, so I figured peppermint would be perfect for this. So taking five of the 20, I still have enough for two more of these adorable tea holders by spending a dollar and using some paper. So paper crafting is very budget friendly. It's really worth it. You can get away with doing this with just a few simple tools that you can get from the Dollar Tree. You don't need anything fancy. You don't need a scoring board to score. You can very easily just score using a ruler and a pen cap or a ruler and Dollar Tree's got 
these two tools. Okay, so now all we need to do is just go ahead and place our tea bags. Look at how stinking fun that is. Isn't that just adorable? And what a fun, budget-friendly, inexpensive gift to give that I honestly think that anybody is absolutely gonna love and appreciate, especially because so many people are out of work right now, they're not getting paid, and you know, we still have that need and that want to gift something to somebody on Mother's Day, especially our moms, or somebody who has been like a mom to us, or even our coworkers. And I feel like this is just an easy way to do that, and it's so budget friendly. And what's great about this is that even after it's been gifted and it's been used, this is something that could be put in your purse if you really wanted to, if you go out or if you're going to work and you wanna keep it on your desk for when you drink tea or want some tea, you can very easily refill this and just have something super adorable on your desk for your tea. Now for this, I really like the button, but I wanted to dress it up just a bit and I wanted to add a little bit more embellishments to this. And so I had a couple of items in my stash that I thought would be fun to add to this. And so I want to add, oops, smile to this if I don't break it, which I did, but that's okay because we can just glue this back together. Okay, it's not gonna stay perfect, but once we glue this on to the paper, I think it's gonna stay fine. Perfect, I like that, that's pretty. And I think that I might just add one of these stickers and I really like this one, I think it's gonna cover up the button just a bit. And kind of add a little bit to it. Oh yeah, I like that. And I think I might even add a bloom to it, this sticker. I think that that's a cute little addition. Would you look at how stinking cute that turned out? I absolutely love this. I think that this is fun. It is easy. We all have nothing but time right now on our hands. I think this is a great way to keep your mind busy, gives you something to do, and it is very therapeutic, and it is a great budget-friendly and expensive gift to give. And I really do just have so much fun making these. I just think that they are really fun and easy to do and I love them. Seriously, how stinking adorable and fun are these? I could even do a bigger size one and we could make them for hot cocoa packets or hot apple cider packets. If you all want me to make one of those and design a template for it, I totally will. Just let me know in the comments below because I go off of your feedback. But I think that these are great and stuff like this is something that you can gift and it's gonna cost you under a dollar to make. If you're a paper crafter or you do a lot of scrapbooking, then you've got paper on hand and you've got cardstock on hand to do this and it's gonna cost you nothing. I hope you all enjoyed today's tea bag holder DIY. Please make sure to give this video a big thumbs up and let's get this video to 5,000 likes because like I always say, each and every one of your thumbs up and those comments that you leave down below, they really do help my channel to grow and it helps YouTube to notice me just a bit more. Until next time, everybody, I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy paper crafting on a budget. Happy everything on a budget. Bye for now, everybody. <laughs>